While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to look at more sample aromaticity problems here. We're going to see these are a little bit harder than the ones we did in a previous online lecture. But this extra practice will make us much better in determining whether or not a molecule is aromatic. So let's look at this first example right here. Is the following molecule aromatic? Well, let's put him through the two criteria here. If we want to make sense of the pi bond in the lower left, there must be two p orbitals like this sideways overlapping. And to explain the other pi bond, we have this going on right here. And notice this carbon right here is a doubly bonded carbon. So it would be sp2 hybridized, which means this carbon does have an unhybridized p orbital. But watch this. I'm going to draw some resonance here. I'm going to say that these pi electrons jump up on top of this carbon. The result of this move is this right here. Now again, remember, if that carbon is sp2 hybridized, it does have a p orbital. And let's just say right here we stick those two electrons in the p orbital. Now remember, I'm allowed to do this because that was an allowable resonance move. Notice what happens here in the process. We have an uninterrupted pi cloud here. So that satisfies the first criterion. Now, what about the second here? Well, counting our pairs here, we end up with three pairs of pi electrons. That's an odd number, so the second criterion is met. Therefore, this molecule is definitely aromatic. So again, we're looking at examples to know that we can do these kinds of things. And remember, this sticks to the maxim that if a molecule can be aromatic, it will be aromatic. In other words, it'll participate in any kind of resonance that will turn the molecule into a full-fledged aromatic molecule. Let's look at another example here. Let's see if this molecule is aromatic. Well, first, let's put the lone pair electrons that would actually be on this sulfur right here. And what we should do first here is I want to show you that this molecule does have resonance in the sense that these electrons can fall down this way and that would push these pi electrons this way and the pi electrons in the carbonyl bond would move up on top of the oxygen like this. Notice the result of that resonance move is this structure right here. Notice now our sulfur has a double bond. If you were to determine his hybridization, you would see that he would be sp2 hybridized in this structure. So that means again, because he's sp2, he could have an unhybridized p orbital. Now with that understood, let's go back to the original molecule. And let's start to make sense of the other bonds here. The pi bond on the left would have to have this arrangement. The pi bond on the right would have to have this arrangement. And remember, if we're saying this sulfur is sp2 hybridized, he must have an unhybridized p orbital, which means one of his lone pair of electrons should be in a p orbital. So notice, if that's the case, then this molecule, as it stands right now, has technically an odd number of pi electron pairs. So that alone would satisfy criterion two. But what about the top carbon that's connected to the oxygen? Well, notice what we can do is perform a resonance move here, and we can say these electrons jump up on top of this oxygen. The resulting structure would look something like this. Notice we get a carbocation here in the ring. And remember, carbocations are sp2 hybridized, which means they have an unhybridized p orbital. But in this case, the unhybridized p orbital is empty. But the reason why this was necessary is so that we can satisfy criterion one, which was the uninterrupted electron pi cloud. So notice that satisfies one. It means this molecule is aromatic. Notice again, we're doing resonance moves here to make this structure aromatic, and in the process, we're succeeding. So we would definitely say that this molecule is aromatic. Let's look at another example. Is this following molecule aromatic? Well, let's first fill in the electrons that would be present on the nitrogens. The nitrogen in the upper left here would have a pair of electrons. This nitrogen would have another. This guy would have a lone pair, and so would this nitrogen down here. Now let's try to make sense of the bonds here. 
This pi bond would be two p orbitals sideways overlapping like this. The pi bond here would be this situation. And notice at this point we got one pair of pi electrons here. We got another right here. And remember, for this guy to be aromatic, we would need an odd pair. So let's see if we could arrange the following atoms in this ring so that we can get, again, an odd pair of pi electrons and an uninterrupted pi cloud. Well, look at this nitrogen in the upper left right here. You could say that the two electrons on top of him fall down and create a double bond, which means just like in all the other examples, this nitrogen could be sp2 hybridized which means he can be thought of as having an unhybridized p orbital. And this could also be true for the bottom left nitrogen. We could draw a resonance structure that would make him have a double bond, making him sp2 hybridized. Therefore, he would have an unhybridized p orbital. And the same thing could be said for the upper right hand nitrogen. He could also have an unhybridized p orbital. Notice what that does to our pi electron pair count. This would be one, another one here. This would be another pair here, and this would be our third pair right here. Notice that brings us to a total of five pairs of pi electrons. That's a nice odd number, so that looks pretty good. But what about the remaining carbons in this ring? For instance, this carbon right here. Remember, we need that uninterrupted pi cloud. So what we can do is make a resonance move like we did before and say these pi electrons jump up on top of this oxygen. Notice you could do the same thing for this carbon right here. Again, the electrons jump up on top of the oxygen. The resulting structures we get here for this is something that looks like this. Again, just like we saw in the last example, you get a carbocation within the ring. And since again, carbocations are sp2 hybridized, they would have an unhybridized p orbital. And again, they would be empty. So notice we've met the criteria here. We do have number two, an odd pair of pi electrons. And also one, we have an uninterrupted pi cloud. So that satisfies the first one. And that means this molecule is definitely aromatic. Let's look at another sample problem here. Is this molecule aromatic? Well, again, let's first fill in the electrons. Each nitrogen would have a lone pair of electrons on it. But what about these borons? Well, remember, if you look at boron on the periodic table, you'll see that he has a valence number of three, which means he has three outermost electrons that are involved in bonding. So for instance, let's look at this B right here. These would be his three valence electrons each one would make a bond to another atom. And if we were to determine his hybridization, we would notice that he is sp2 hybridized, which is a good sign so far because remember again, that means he's gonna have an unhybridized p orbital, so it's possible for us to set up an uninterrupted pi cloud. So with that, let's finish our analysis here. Let's make him again sp2 hybridized with an unhybridized p orbital like this. And of course, it would be empty. That would also be true for this boron over here and this one down here. And again, just like the other sample problems we saw in this section, these nitrogens could be considered sp2 hybridized, which means we could put their lone pair in a p orbital. That would be true for this nitrogen here, for this one over here, and this one above. Notice what we have here. Counting our number of pi electron pairs, this would be one pair, this would be a second pair, this would be a third pair. So that means the second criterion would be met. And again, because those borons have those unhybridized p orbitals, that would create an uninterrupted pi cloud. So the first criterion is also met. Therefore, this molecule is definitely aromatic. At this point, you should go to your organic chemistry textbook and try as many of these problems as possible. As you can see, it's kind of tricky. There's kind of an almost an art to it. So that's why if you need this skill, you're going to have to practice a lot.